Okay, so today we are gonna be making an English breakfast sausage. Now I've got 2.5 kilos of pork here. Half of it is from the shoulder and half of it is from the belly. That's been minced by my butchers and all of the other ingredients are gonna be a percentage of that. So we've got 250 grams of white breadcrumbs going in. That's 10% by weight of pork. They've been soaked in 500 grams of water, 20% by the weight of pork and they've been left in the fridge for about an hour to absorb all that water. And now my spice mix is going in which is also a percentage of the weight of pork. I've got 2% of sea salt which is 50 grams, 1% black pepper which is 25 grams, 0.2% dried oregano, 5 grams and 0.2% dried thyme which is 5 grams. And then we're going to give this a really good mix with our hands. Now all of the details for the ingredients will be in the description, but using percentages makes it super easy to adjust the amounts uh, to suit your taste. Now when you're making sausages, it's really important that everything's kept cold. So leave that mince in the fridge until you're ready to use it and make sure that when you soak your breadcrumbs, they're soaked in cold water and left for an hour in the fridge to absorb the cold water so they're nice and cold. Now obviously we want to distribute all of the breadcrumbs and the seasoning well throughout the sausage mix but we also want to make sure that we're squeezing that pork really really well. You're going to want to go hard at this for at least 10 minutes. You want to achieve kind of a sticky texture where the lean pork and the fat have started to bond to each other and that's what's going to give us that classical English banger texture. So after that workout, you can reward yourself with a taster. And this is the time where it's good to boil a bit of that mixture up, cook it off in a pan so we can test the seasoning. And then if needed, you can adjust it. And as soon as you've tested it, get that mix back in the fridge because it's gonna sit for about an hour or two just to let all the flavors get to know each other and then we'll crack on with making the sausages. Right, while that mixture is chilling out in the fridge, I'm gonna crack on and get the uh, sausage casings prepared. Now these are natural casings. You can find these online quite easily. I'm using large ones, which are perfect for the old British banger. And they normally come packed in salt, vacuum packed. And when I get them, I just split them down into rough portion sizes and then freeze them individually. Now before using them, we need to give them a good soak. This is gonna remove the salt and also make them pliable, which makes them easy to use. So I'll probably change this water three or four times and wait until the sausage casings are nice and slippery. And that normally takes anything up to about an hour. As soon as those sausage casings are well soaked, we can get the stuffer loaded up with the sausage meat. Now it's really important that we put this in and we push it down really, really hard into the tube. We wanna try and get rid of any air that's inside because we don't want that air pumping into our sausages as we stuff them. All right, this can be a bit of a messy job, so I just put down a damp tea towel and then a plastic container lid on top of that. Right, grab your soaked casings and find one end. Open the end up and then dip it into the water so you start to fill the inside of the intestine with some water. And that's gonna make it a lot easier to put onto this nozzle. Okay, so keep sliding it on until either you find the end of the casing or the nozzle becomes full and you have to snip it off. Now in either case, don't tie a knot in the end of this. Just leave it hanging over the end of the nozzle so when we start to pipe the sausage, any air that's trapped in there will just pass through the end of the casing. Now piping the sausages, this takes a little bit of getting used to. It's a bit like patting your head and rubbing your tummy. But basically with one hand you're going to crank the handle and with the other one you're just going to help ease the sausage casing off of the nozzle. And at the same time you're feeling for how much sausage meat is going into that casing. We don't want it over full, but we definitely don't want it half empty. Now this is something that you're going to have to get by practice. There's no other way to explain it. Once you've done it a few times, you'll get it for sure. And that's basically that. You just keep going until you've used up all of your sausage meat. If of course you run out of your casings on the nozzle, then you just need to reload and start again. Okay, so now it's time to form them into individual sausages. Now you can do that by just twisting them one by one, or you can have a go at linking them into kind of a string of butcher's sausages, I guess. And that's done by finding the middle and then just making a small indentation in the sausage meat and twisting that. Hook that link over one finger and then measure out your sausages. And when you've got the desired length, push them together and give them a twist. And then you're gonna take one of the ends and pass it through 
the first two sausages and then you just repeat the same again. Measure out your sausage, pinch them together, twist, and then taking one of the tails that's left over, you'll pull it through the middle of the second set of sausages that you've made. And again, on to the third. Measure them out with your hand, pinch, twist, and that twist will also build the pressure up in the sausage, making a firm shape. And then you take one of the tails and pull it straight through. Again, pinch together when you've found the size of the sausage you want, twist the sausages round, grab one of the tails, and pull it through. Now when you get to the end, you may find you've got a couple of misshaped sausages. Maybe there's not enough there to make a sausage out of. If there's not, just pull it out of the skin and save it to make some burgers. If there is enough in there, but you can't link them together, then just gently push the sausage meat back up into the intestine and you can tie that casing in a knot just to hold everything in nice and tight. Now, if you can resist the urge to dive into these straight away, they will definitely benefit from a rest in the fridge overnight. You can either lay these as they are into a big baking tray, or you can hang them up in the fridge. And then the next day, I just like to portion them all up in plastic containers. I keep some in the fridge and the rest in the freezer. Let's get a couple cooked up and I will tell you exactly what they taste like. Right, we'll give this sausage a bit of a whirl. Oh, it's juicy. Oh yeah. Mm. The seasoning's really, really good. Here's a tip. After you've made the initial mix and you try it, the salt levels may taste just a little bit high. Give it a chance. After these have had time to rest, then we make the sausages, leave them to hang in the fridge overnight. That salt content seems to balance perfectly through the sausage and you end up with a really, really well seasoned and flavorful banger. They are so juicy. And the reason why these are still so juicy is because of the uh, filler that we put in the breadcrumbs. Soaking them in water, then putting them in the mix, means that when it's cooked, these can hang on to all of their moisture and all of the fat. And of course, fat is a great carrier of flavor, and that's what makes a British banger so good. Wow. Yeah. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Click subscribe for some future content, and I will see you again very soon.